I grew up in Skem back in the 70s. We moved to Skem when I was about nine. Skem was still being built. There was no roads. Concourse wasn't there. There was a little market down the bottom and um, loads of green fields. Plenty of places to go. You could get lost for the day. Summer holidays lasted for seven years. They just went on and on and on and on. And plenty of places to go. As a kid, plenty of places to explore. Skem should have had a population of around about 120, 130,000. Should have had a hospital, should have had a lot of amenities. A lot of factories like Courtalls and Thorns, Dunlop, were given grants by the government to set up in Skem. A lot of people from Liverpool came to work there, and then very quickly after the grants ran out, the factories went, Skem stopped growing. I started down a negative path, um, 14, 15, 16, I was part of a gang. Um, done a few things that I can't say I regret, but if I had, in fact if I had my time again I probably wouldn't change anything. I became a youth worker when I was, when I was 25, 26, and I think when kids have said to me, what do you know, well I actually know quite a bit. I always knew I was meant for something better. I always knew there was something more. I kind of had two paths that I could have gone down. I could have stayed on the path of gangs, fights, stealing cars, and all that type of stuff, or I can go down this path now. So now I've got two choices. There was two youth workers, a guy called Paul Prescott and a guy called Jim Hewitt, um, who kind of recognised that I had something just a little bit more. They got me onto the Duke of Edinburgh's programme. It kind of showed me that there was something else that I was good at, and, and it kind of made me realise that I, I knew I was meant for something different. I was uh, a senior worker working for the youth service in File and Wire. And I was working with young people that were really, really good at graffiti. But we're never going to be teachers, we're never going to be rocket scientists. We're probably getting kicked out of school or we're already kicked out of school. So I went to the youth service and said, like, these kids are really, really good. They're so good they're better than the organisations. Why aren't we paying these kids to work in their, their area, their locality, and show their peers that they can actually do something and really achieve something? I got pulled into the office, I got, I got a good selling off, I got disciplined, and I was told that I would never get any work with the youth service. To this day, um, those young people that I initially set up for are still working for us. They've just set up their own print company up in Blackpool, um, two of them. We just supported them to, to get that done and whenever we do commissions and we need artists, they're the, they're the artists we pay. That's how you think came about. I give them an opportunity. I don't, I don't make them do what we do. I don't stop them from doing what they do. But there comes a point where they have to make a choice. And the choice is, do you take this path where you get commissions, you, you get paid to do something you're really good at, or do you go down the other path and you keep tagging, you keep doing the anti-social stuff and you get nicked, you end up with a fine, you end up in prison. I think one of our biggest success stories of, of recent um, started three years ago. I was at a party and I was talking to, to some people about what I did and working with young people and doing graffiti and, and empowering them. And, uh, and this one says, oh, my, my nephew does graffiti. He's, he's a good graffiti artist. So I'd said, so why don't you get him to come down? And then 
I got a message off this kid called Sai. And I told him about the project. If you want to come down, bring some of your mates down. I heard about a project that was going on. So um, I messaged Gary, and then he told me where to turn up and what to do and stuff. So I went down. He was helping other young people to, to, to do some good graffiti. Got involved, really, just... I'd done painting before, but I'd never done any, any like, commission kind of stuff or any workshops or anything like that, so it was all new to me. He kind of just fitted kind of, of what you think was about. His talent, his ability, just needed recognising, and it needed someone to give him an opportunity. I don't often give praise because I, I, I think by over-praising people, it, it becomes worthless. Um, and I suppose one day I'll tell him how good he's doing, but I don't want him to know yet. I still want him to achieve more. I think back then, because as an artist or as a graffiti artist or any, any kind of creative, you have an opinion, you have a very strong opinion of what you do. And I think back then, I really didn't like people telling me how to paint or what to paint and stuff like that. I'd say back then, Gary, um, had a certain way of painting, it had to be, or had to be the same way. And I wanted to do what I wanted to do at the time, which, probably thinking back then, I probably had some silly ideas. Like, <laughs> we've both grown together in the ways that we work and how we work. Over the past three years, of like everyone has, I've been through a, a lot of ups and downs and stuff. And I'd say every time he has been there to offer some advice and stuff, and um, it helps, I think it does, having someone who's experienced what they have and a lot through life to um, give you advice. You don't do this thing for the money. I'll never be a millionaire. I'll never make a lot of money. But that doesn't matter. Because when I see people like these guys who three years ago were potentially going down a different route and now everything you do is legal. They don't do anything illegal in terms of the graffiti and, and the artwork that they do.